number one place we're dying on the street is running wide in corners. We've all heard it, do all your braking in a straight line, right? Get all your braking done, then jump off the brakes, try to tip in on that underloaded front. So that contact pressure is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Or yeah. even if we're going from 20 points of brake to nothing, again, the bike's designed to steer best with the weight forward. And as the onboard engineer, if we're taking that weight off the front, then we're not riding the motorcycle the way it's designed to be ridden. Grip is finite. And, and those who win things, those who want to ride all their lives, make a living doing it, have to be able to maintain that grip forever. I got the All right, guys, don't pay any attention to this. That's for a whole nother video. Just don't even look at it. I'm waiting on a part and that video will be coming soon. For all of you that are new to the channel, my name is Tall and this is YouTube channel Traveling Tall. Today's video is gonna be a great video. Watch it from the beginning to the absolute end. Great information I have for you and it could possibly save your life, this information that I have. Watch the video, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. I had the pleasure of talking with Nick, Travis, Cody, and Kyle. They talked to us about trail breaking. And some of the things you're gonna hear these guys say might go against what you've been doing or hearing all your life. Please take the time to watch the whole video. I think it'll be very beneficial. Send it to your friends and family. Anyone who has a motorcycle, thinking about buying a motorcycle, or has been riding a motorcycle 50, 60 years, this video is a must watch. So let's get into the video. Today, I get to ride the new Street Glide ST and Road Glide ST. So, uh, let me show you this. Look at that. How beautiful it is. I'm in Arizona. That's the track over there. I just stayed back there. And uh, I'm in Wilcox, Arizona. It is um, about an hour and 15 minutes from Tucson, Arizona. And it's absolutely beautiful out here. Yeah, we'll be eating breakfast at 7.45 and then they're going to do some uh, briefing us, telling us, I guess, what we can and can't do or just what we are expected to do. And then we're going to go riding on the track. I'm excited about that. And if the weather holds off, we're going to be leaving the track and go riding out in the beautiful part of Arizona. It's going to be a great day. All right, see you in a minute. As we start to tip the bike into the corner and start to add lead angle points, we give away braking points. It's called trail braking. You're trailing brake pressure into the corner. Your brake light stays on past the tip in. If you aren't trail braking, if your brake light goes off before you tip in, you'll never get the sport right. You'll never, never be the rider you want to be. So, uh, unknown roads will be tougher, faster bikes will be tougher, uh, so it'll be difficult. So we go to the brakes when we're nervous. Tie it back to, Please. to the engineering side, right? These bikes are designed to have the force compressed as you're steering into the corner with the brakes on, the tire squishes out, that contact patch is larger against the asphalt. So the engineers have designed these motorcycles to take that load, and a lot of times we're, we have this thinking, or, or we're taught even, that we can't be braking into the corner. We gotta get up, off, get up off those brakes. And So what it is that I go to the brakes, and then get off the, off the brakes, watch that contact patch, if yep. I see that. So we go to the brakes, because we're nervous for the corner, we build pressure, here comes the corner, we're taught, get off the brakes before we tip in, is our contact patch larger or smaller tipping in the corner? If you're off the brakes, it's smaller. It's smaller. Yeah. So now we got some problems. And, and uh, the nice thing is Bjorn's whole group has come and, and worked with us for years and years. And Bjorn, this idea of trail braking, where is it in your, your not only your riding, which the guy's really quick, but also in what you do for, for design? Everywhere. Yeah. We design this bike to be ridden just as they talked about. We're not coming into a corner, I'm loading the bag, I'm getting ready to work that tire, getting it through a corner. It, that is, so this, the geometry of the bike is designed such that when it's actually compressed in those situations, that's where it turns the best. If, I'm, if you're coming in, it'll still go around a corner, you know, off the brakes, fine. But when, when the pace picks up, when you're having, when you're moving more, that's what it's meant to be. That's how every, that's how I design the bike for it, that's how all of my guys do it, that's how we ride. Because that's how the motorcycle wants to be ready. It's easy to think there's a lot of different ways to ride a motorcycle. And, and there are until you try to go quick or the grip is down. So as you, as you approach the corner, you roll off the throttle to yeah. the brake lever because you're nervous about the corner, making the corner. You pick up brake pressure, you squeeze the brakes as you need to, nice and smooth, we'll talk about that. Yeah. As you get to the corner and you want to add the angle points, you're starting to give away, give away braking points 
as you add lean angle points. Oh, okay. As you add steering wheel in your car, John, you're giving away brake pressure, right. trail braking into the corner. You're doing it all the okay. time, all right. but you may be told not to do it on a bike. So we're thinking, getting this idea that to go to the brakes, nervous. We're, we're always chasing this, this having this load and grip in the middle of the corner. We all, we all feel what that feels like. Okay. It's very difficult to get there unless we can generate that load from the get-go and then and then hold that load as we get into the corner. So if we if we jump off the brakes and we try to get that force back by kind of flicking the bike in or trying to generate that centrifugal, why not let's put that brake pressure forward, put that weight forward. Like that. We trade off those braking points for that cornering force and the cornering force takes over and keeps that contact patch nice and big in the, in the asphalt. So in, in simple, simply put, we're gonna leave our brake light on past the tip end. Right. You wanna do it, you may be told not to, and you're trying to ride that way. So just leave your brake past the tip end. If your brake light goes off before you tip in, you broke too early or too hard, try to brake a little bit later or a little lighter so you can carry your pace down in the corner. If it's a corner you don't need the brakes for, you're just simply closing the throttle, it does put weight forward, it's just not as efficient. But it's not a bad way to, just to enter the corner, but make sure that weight is forward, having that throttle closed. You'll start to see as we go quicker, we use more brakes. So say out loud, please, more speed, more brakes. More speed, more brakes. Because the corner won't change for us. So we, if we approach it faster, we need to close the throttle, not just coast in the corner, but pick up that brake pressure and tip it in. So you come, you say, okay, this makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go down to the first corner on this bike. I'm gonna close the throttle, tip in with the brakes on, and tip in with the brakes on, and I get in the corner too slowly. Am I hurt? Am I hurt getting in the corner too slowly? No. no. <laughs> we're hurting ourselves, riders. Number one place we're dying on the street is running wide in corners. So Kyle's got this idea, K-Dub and, and Travis, Cody, everybody that, that rides well. Paul, I mean, the, all these guys that ride so well. Um, Kyle, what's wrong with this grab of the brake lever? What's wrong with me grabbing the brakes here? Why, why is that so bad? I'm not hurt. I'm not losing well, traction. You, no, it's, it, it's, there's nothing wrong with it if, you, if you're not at any pace, mm. right? Or it's a perfectly dry day and you're riding around in a parking lot, you can grab 20, 30, 40 points of brakes. Like but that. as soon as you lean over past 60, we'll say, huh? you blow through the edge of grip. Yeah. And right. this is a sport, isn't it? Yeah, and whether, whether the pace comes up or the lean angle comes, where you have more lean angle, or it starts to rain, or we have a little bit of gravel on a road, we've seen that a lot. You, you get that same feel of, of grabbing, stabbing, that those kind of verbs where you're putting you're putting input into the bike too quickly. That's so right. where you have issues. If you find yourself, if you feel that brake snap on, front or rear, if you feel it, fix it, because you're on the way to a, a fall down. Because look, at, here you can do it, here you can't. That's how simple this sport is, and that's why we'll have you work on being smooth every single time. So if you feel yourself stab the front brake, stab the rear brake, smooth that stuff out. If you, rear tire at lean angle, you've got the bike Lean in the corner, and you're gonna accelerate off the corner. And you grab the throttle. What's wrong with that verb? Grab. Everybody, you grab the throttle, and you lose grip, and you fall down before you know it. And you can blame a new tire, you can blame a rainy day, but in fact, you grab that throttle with too many percentage points. Are we good at that? If you could sneak open that throttle, you can put weight into that tire, and look at what do you know? That tire grips as opposed to right that grabs the throttle. Everybody good at this idea? So for the rest of your life, I mean, if you start up your bike, and tall, I'm sure you hear this in your in your circle. If you start up your bike and go room, 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 30, 30, 30, <laughs> you're literally going down. You're going to be falling down. And even if you don't, your friend who's brand new will hear you do that. Oh, there's the expert, and they will do that. And now the whole ball of snow starts. So, 100 points of grip. We're going to always be playing with it. We're going to be smooth initial. We're going to be smooth on throttle initial. And Cody, when we when people lose the front end, which is losing front grip, crash off the front, is the tire overloaded generally or underloaded? Yeah, very commonly, 90, 95% of crashes, let's say on the street or where the bike's running wide, it's an underloaded front tire. What's that mean? So we've all heard it, do all your braking in a straight line, right? Get all your braking done, then jump off the brakes, try to tip in on that underloaded front. So that contact patch is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Or yeah. even if we're going from 20 points of brake to nothing, Again, the bike's designed to steer best with the weight forward. And as the onboard engineer, if we're taking that weight off the front, then we're not riding the motorcycle the way it's designed to be ridden. We could make it pretty cut and dry. We could say no one good jumps off the brake past tipping. But let's look at what the engineers and the designers have tested for years of how this bike's designed to be ridden. So underloaded front, that's where 
Maybe we're jumping off the brakes, you see that contact patch go away, or even if we grab 20 points of throttle, all that weight comes off the front, uh, same idea. In racing, in MotoGP, Moto America, we're seeing overloaded front tire crashes. Overloaded front. That's where we're trying to, yeah, yeah trying more, to get more. so much grip. Thing starts to chatter, starts to maybe give give up, and then it finally goes away. It's a little bit different than underloaded, which we commonly will see on the street. Travis, how hard do you work on brake release mid corner? How hard? Where is that in your whole? Ninety-five percent. Everybody, <laughs> right? Best in the best in the country. Top of the box. Understand the best in the country. He comes in, goes to the brakes, he's nervous, tips in with the brakes on, giving away braking points as he adds lean angle points called trail braking. And he comes in and he's easing off two, one, one half, zero points of brakes as he gets down to 100 points of lean angle, whatever that means to you. So this idea that everybody thinks I've got to be smooth initial with everything. Now we're putting in your brains, you've got to be smooth with final braking or you have these front tire losses. So if you feel yourself stab it on, stab it off, you're gonna have a problem. You can fix that all by yourselves. If you feel that initial throttle, it's gonna be tough, okay? Let's add one more thing. Let's have a little analogy here. Let's do it, please. I like the analogy. Analogy, yeah. Um, so of, of you guys, who is, you know, who's been taught, you know, do all your braking in a straight line, off the brakes, uh, slow, press, roll, look, press, roll, whatever it is. Who has been taught that way or is riding that way of you? I mean, we've heard it quite a bit. That's the way they teach it in like the MIC class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so let's think about this in our cars. So we're we're in our car, we're heading towards the Walmart, we're pulling into the Walmart parking lot. When do we brake for when we are gonna go into the parking lot? One half one third of the way between the two driveways by divided the by stop. pi yeah. by the bus stop. Like right. You carry the, the one. Yeah, with the Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we break when we're nervous, when we see visually that, hey, we're probably not going to make it if we don't start slowing down. Yeah. We go to the brakes. When do we actually release the brakes at that point? Not until you're already in. Not until you're, really, you're actually yeah. in. So really, we go to the brakes when we're nervous. We use them until we're happy with speed and direction. So we're in our car still. We're pulling into the Walmart parking lot. We're using lean angle, steering wheel, trailing off our brakes until we have our car pointed and slowed enough to continue on into that parking lot. So we do this so naturally in our cars. We're pulling off a 270 degree off ramp and we're in our cars again, we, you know, turn signal. We always use our turn signal, right? <laughs> Pull off there. We don't jump off the brakes and then just use steering wheel to navigate through. Or if it tightens up mid corner, what do we do? Do we just add steering wheel? No, we, we smoothly start to load some, some braking. We slow our speed, our radius tightens up and we make a corner. Yeah. So all these natural things that we do in our cars, we want to give you these tools on motorcycles, but truly you guys, I mean, if you can text on your phone, you can trail break. Yeah. So it's just a different way of thinking of things, maybe. And you just said it right there, you know, being able to put load forward before we really start to work the tire. And that's yeah. really what we're getting into. So Cody doesn't come down in the corner, none of these guys come down in the corner and stab the brakes, come down the corner and they close the throttle completely. Everybody good at that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all completely onto the brake lever. There's people out there teaching leave the throttle open with the brakes on. Nope, the throttle goes closed completely to the brake lever. And Cody's thinking about, I'm going to put that weight forward. The fork has to move, the spring has to take a set, then the tire's got to squish out, then we've got some grip. And uh, Kyle, Cody, that, that's initial squeeze on the brakes. How long does that take? It's, it's, about a, it's about a millisecond, right? It doesn't take a long distance or time. Just that first initial squeeze, that first half a percent, one percent, then, you know, pads against the rotors, fork travels, tire compresses, now the tire is loaded, now it can really start to work the tire. So let's add one more thing, because we're going to get this figured out. You're going you're to stab the brakes once or twice and go, okay, i got to clean that up, because I know at lean angle I can't do that. You're going to grab the throttle once or twice and kind of shock yourself, okay, i got to clean that up and get that smoothness going. How you let go of the brake lever becomes insanely smooth. Let's add one more thing. If front grip is brake pressure plus lean angle, which, which it is, right? And rear grip is throttle plus lean angle, which it is. Let's get rid of flicking the bike in the corner. Don't add lean angle quickly because it's the same as adding brakes and throttle too quickly. I should say abruptly. You can be pretty quick, but you can't be abrupt. So in other words, get that idea. Don't think I'm going to get on this bike with this nice big handlebar and I'm going to throw it into the corner. That's what gets us in trouble because now we're adding lean angle too quickly. It's just the same 
as adding throttle or brakes too quickly. Everybody good on that idea? The ambulance driver won't know what you did. Whether you grab the brakes, grab the throttle, or flick the bike in the corner, same type of crash. You just blow through the edge of grip. And so for the rest of our lives, really, and I, and I know you, you, this is already, especially in journalists, they've already been thinking about this stuff and knowing that if you crash a lot, you're, you won't have much of a job. Uh, but now we're starting to get our ideas. Instead of saying, be smooth, think about, I'm going to put weight forward through the fork spring into the tire, load the tire. I'm going to steer the bike so the load can stay in the tire. I'm going to pick my throttle up gently so the weight can go into that rear tire. Everybody good on this idea? And this, this 100 points of grip. I mean, it's, 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 it's so counterintuitive, a lot, really, for new riders because they're thinking, well, if I have brakes on, or I'm taking away from, from available grip. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I'm riding in the rain, don't use the brakes as much. But actually, in our initial loading of those tires, we're creating, we're raising our ceiling of grip initially. Yep. And, and we never know where the edge of grip is, right? So, what do you mean? You're king of the baggers. You tell me you don't know how much grip there is. We never do we because don't. it's always changing. But the way you find the edge of grip, if you can find it smoothly and not blow through the edge of it, like we saw with Nick's 40 point hand, we can, we can almost crash, we can save a crash, we can get feel from that front tire before we actually have an issue and we can stay within the limits of grip. Trav, how, in, in a winning a Moto America race, how many times do you almost crash, do you think? Quite a bit. <laughs> Here I am thinking I'm at the edge of grip and Kyle passed me around the outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, how, yeah, much, yeah. how much grip is there, really? Yeah. Yeah. If, if I walk up to Nick and Nick's shoulder breaks at 20 pounds and I go 22, right? It just I just blow through that limit of grip. Let me but just if, show you what he just did. Breaks. Hmm. Okay. But now I'm going to think about loading the tire before I work it. So 1%, one, 1%, 1 now it's loaded. Now I build that pressure, 10, 11, 12, 18, 19, 20, 20. Start to give them feedback. Start to get some feedback, right? So if we're linear with these inputs, if we're, if we're progressive, then we'll always start to get some feedback from this tire. We'll not, it's not just gonna be an abrupt um, down before we know it. Last one he did, he started zero, one, half, one, then it's loaded, right, Cody? At this point, he can play with pressures. The way he steers the bike, the way he pays brake pressure and throttle pressure, now he can play with those things. And, and what, what Travis is talking about when he almost crashes, he gets the thing in the corner, the front starts to just, just tuck on him, but he's done it so smoothly. It talks and goes, Trav, I'm at the edge here. He comes off the corner, just spins a little bit. As he comes off the corner, I'm at the edge here because he does it so smoothly. So for the rest of your career, and, and really for your readers too, I mean, you should, you should definitely write about these things because I think 4,900 riders a year have died on motorcycles over the last five years as an average, 25,000 riders dead on motorcycles, many more hurt running wide in corners because they let go of the brakes before they tip in. Fork rebounds, bike runs wide as it's designed. Let go of the brakes, bike runs wide, Bjorn said, yep, the bike is designed to run wide. So all of a sudden we can just, in, in, in your words, you can get people trail braking, get them on these type of ideas. It's the second core champions habit that we talk about with all our group. First one's being in the moment, not being a crybaby about mistakes. Second one is grip is finite. And, and those who win things, those who want to ride all their lives, make a living doing it, have to be able to maintain that grip forever. All right, guys, so that's the end of the video. It was an awesome video sitting down talking with Nick, Travis, Kyle, and Cody, and Bjorn, he was there as well. These guys really know their motorcycles, and I learned a lot. Hopefully, you learned a lot as well. Now, part two of this video is coming up, and we're going to move over to the track, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. I already posted a video of me on the motorcycle on the track, but... This is a little different, so you're really going to like part two of this video. If you enjoyed part one, definitely check for part two. So you might want to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed and the notification bell to be notified when the video is uploaded. I like this video so much, it might, I might even upload the video the same day. I'm working on it probably as you're watching this one. I'm probably working on the next video to be released maybe the same day. All right, guys, so I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully you like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. Comment below. I love to know what you think. Did you learn anything from the video? Also want to thank Nick, Travis, Cody, and Kyle, and everyone from Harley Davidson. And I, again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Keep gliding. Get ready for part two. And as always, have a blessed day.